All right, this is an exciting day for me. It's probably been two years since we've had a significant enough snowfall here in Nova Scotia, or at least in my area around Halifax, that I could take my snowshoes out for the day. I mean, unless they were sitting by the door and I ran out while it was still snowing, usually there was a rainstorm the day after that would uh, cancel everything out. But uh, we had our storm yesterday. Uh, we had yesterday to clear off. We had lots of blowing, windy, cold temperatures overnight, but now I'm out. Now I can actually get out to do a little snowshoeing. I'm not in the Blue Mountain Wilderness like I normally am. I'm in a local part, only a couple of kilometers away from my house. But uh, I know some off trails, there's some primary trails, which I'm on now, I'll give you a little look at. But uh, there are some off trails that uh, I hope to get up, have a coffee, and have another little discussion with you. I hope you'll join me. This is just gorgeous. Now you can see I'm not the first person here. Everybody else had the same idea. And I even see some marks for people, oh yeah, with their snowshoes. You can see the baskets from their poles. I'm a little late, I'm not breaking new trail, but uh, enjoyable nonetheless. Had it been packed down any more, it would have been a little less enjoyable. But I think there's some fresh, areas up here where I can get off the trail and get in where it's uh, new snow everywhere. I know exactly how fortunate I am to have this. I probably could have even walked here, got a little extra exercise, but I did drive. <laughs> Only because, maybe because I was so excited to get here. And good chance I will be tired by the time I finish this. And I've got to put the phone away for a few minutes so I can use my hiking poles to give myself a little stability here. I think this will work out. Yeah, all right, this works. That's perfect. It's not one tree, it's two trees. Yes, that is perfect. Stamp a little paddle form down. That should work. All right. I think this is a beautiful spot for a cup of coffee. All right, let's set up. All right, so, coffee. Doesn't matter how cold you are when you head out, you warm up 
pretty quickly. I think I'll put on my little fingerless gloves for this. So today is cheat day. You'll see what I mean. First, water, hopefully not frozen. I put it in hot in the thermos bottle a couple hours ago. There we go. Kettle. Windscreen, I think I may have to use it. Coffee cup. Gas stove, that's what it's all about. Got a small uh, winter mix, isobutane propane winter mix inside of the little homemade cozy. Hopefully it'll be enough. And my stove does have a regulator on it, so it should work for this. I don't think there's anything else I need in here, nope. Oh, yes there is. Something to sit it on. I think I'll just sit it right on top of this. This is a little bag I carry along with me that has a fiberglass mat for putting under wood stoves, but it also has a piece of aluminum flashing, roof flashing, there it is inside, for catching embers and the like, but together they make a bit of a platform if I have a nice, relatively stable space to put it on. Then it will give me somewhere to set my stove, just like that. Do I need glasses for this? Wouldn't hurt. I say cheating, but it's not really. It's just, you know, I do like building my fires, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a gas stove when the opportunity presents itself, like today. You just have to choose the right one for the temperature. And I've used this in pretty cold temperatures before, and it has worked. So I don't have any reason to think it won't work today. Remote gas canister. That's nice. As I mentioned, regulated. Regulated helps to work even in the colder temperatures. This is the whole point of having this mark, was to keep that from getting cold. All right, that'll work. Now the kettle. Hopefully it's not too windy out here. The sound is picking up. I'll put that right there. I can smell the coffee the moment I opened up the can, uh, the top off of my kettle. Come on, if I can get it out. There we go, coffee. And pour over coffee maker, the cheap ones. Well, inexpensive ones, they're still just fine. They're made of silicone, I got mine at the dollar store. That's a good place to find. I don't know if they're still there or not. I know you can buy them on Amazon, but you're not going to get them for a dollar or two. Hold on to that for a second. Let's get this water boiling. There we go. Yeah, it stayed pretty hot. Still, still steam coming out of it. kettle with the stove going. Oh yeah, that lit right up. I'll bet you that's ready. The hot water that is is ready before I'm ready for it. All right, now I better hurry. So 
So I have a selection in here. I think I've shown this before. I have paper filters. I have homemade cotton filters, and I've got stainless steel filters. But today it's going to be paper. I'll take it home, of course. All right. Hopefully you're going to be able to see this on video. I have to make sure. Can you see my stove? Yes, I think you can see the stove. I don't know if you can see the coffee, though. I'll just adjust it down a little bit if it's necessary. Yep, water's hot, just like that. Just like that. One. Actually, I'm going to turn it off. Two. Three. Rampage coffee. Good, no matter how strong you make it. All right, let's pour that. Okay, I'm just going to adjust the camera to make sure you can see pouring the water. You got to be able to, oh yeah, you can see it, good. All right, I don't have to adjust anything. I asked somebody a comment recently about uh, pour overs in cold weather. That it takes a while for the water to go through, and it does. And the comment was uh, he thought the coffee would be cold by the time it went through, and it can be. That's no argument here. What I find, though, is a silicone pour-over like this does a good job of insulating. And I'm pouring into a double wall mug. So those two things together should mean that it will uh, be just about perfect once I'm f the coffee's finished going through. And I expect that, yeah, that'll be all I need. I put that down. All right, that's going to finish pouring through, and I am going to reposition the camera just so we can have a little bit of a chat. And I'm still waiting for the uh, water to pour through on my pour over. I thought I'd just give you a view, or my view, a view of my view. So I'm well off the beaten trail now. Quite into, well, you can see how dense it is behind me here. It was actually starting to get pretty hard to snowshoe through that. Pretty, right? All right, my coffee is just about poured through. All right, from the outside, this is gonna look like, man, that's a lot of work just to get a cup of coffee. Uh, yeah, it is, if that's all well, you look at it as just an opportunity to have a coffee. I mean, I could have done this at home, even in my backyard, there's enough snow there if I really had felt the need to be out in the snow. But when you own snowshoes that you would love using, but you haven't had the snow for a couple of years to use them. You got to take advantage of that opportunity. I mean, yeah, we've had some snowstorms. Not that this is the biggest one so far this year, and it's just at, right at the end of January. Uh, we've had snowstorms in the previous years that I could have got on out, but I would have had the snowshoes at the door ready to go because the very next day the rains came and, and then it either washed it away or turned it into ice, making it not a lot of fun. Not today. Today is perfect. Windy chilly, averaging about minus five Celsius right now, but uh, I don't mind. Look at this. Steam coming off the coffee. Oh my goodness. That's a cup of coffee. Okay, so this is more than just a hike with a coffee. It's a follow-up to a recent video I made where I kind of confessed how doing reviews was starting to weigh me down, that I was missing all the opportunities I wanted to get out and uh, just enjoy the woods without having to feel the pressure. And I know the pressure I put on myself, right? Well, okay, some of it is external. Some people are just pushy, 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 but I, I'm, it's easy enough to, to ignore them. Everybody gets the reviews. They may just not get it as quickly as they would like it. The better companies understand how this works. 
some of the smaller companies, they just push, push, push. Uh, and of course, then I tend to push back and push them back. Don't tell them that though, right? I push them back a little bit. So there is a bit of a pressure externally, but most of it is inside, wanting to accommodate everybody that gave me something to review. It's a lot of work. I've talked about that before. I'm not going back there again. I'm not talking about reviews and uh, kind of whining about all the work that's involved. That's, it is what it is. I know what it was when I, well, I didn't know when I started. I know now what it's all about. But the video I put out received a tremendous amount of comments, more than a lot of my videos do. I know I invited it, and trust me, I appreciate you doing this for me. And there were some people that uh, had said, they'll take whatever I put out, they enjoy it. I really appreciate that support. There are some people who said, I stopped watching because you started doing so many reviews. Understood, no, no, I, I don't feel, uh, please don't feel bad about it, I know you don't, but I don't want anybody to feel bad. If reviews are not your thing, then feel free to tune me out. But clearly, I heard people say they wanted me to get out and do this more. Well, that was an easy sell. I wanted to get out and do this more. So I'm doing it now. This is my second one within a week of that. And it's kind of a follow-up, part two to the last one. And uh, I think what I want to do, and we'll just make this short, what I want to do is invite you to share with me what kind of videos you would like me to make when I come out in the woods, when I'm not doing reviews. Uh, People like the hike videos, showing the, the area where I'm in. I totally understand that. Not everybody gets an opportunity to go out into the woods. Not everybody has wilderness areas like I do, as close to home as I do. It's a lot more of an expedition just to get to them. I know how fortunate I am. And that's something, that's the reason why I volunteer with the uh, organization, the Friends of Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lake Society, is to help protect that wilderness and make sure it stays a wilderness. This little area in the park is managed by another volunteer group. I know the people involved. This is not, I'm not a part of their group. But this, again, is one of those little gyms within our city that I can get out and do this where I'm sitting, right? Maybe a bit more restrictive in terms of some of the activities I can do out here, but close, and I can do, well, I can make coffee, right? And I can sit down and do that. So I'm going to get out more often just for me. I'm not going to be bringing all kinds of kit, tools, toys, whatever you want to call them, to test out. I mean, I still have to do that. I still have those obligations, and I still like doing that. I, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. A lot of the stuff I really enjoy working with, like wood stoves and knives, that's to me, is fun. That is part of who I am. I really enjoy doing that. So that's not going to go away. But there were other things that I agreed to that after the fact, I said, okay, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have. And okay, I'll do it, but I'll learn from that and not do it again. Well, sometimes I'm a slow learner, so sometimes there are repeats of things that I probably should not have taken. But uh, yeah, so here it is. What do you want me to do out here? What types of things would you like me to make videos on when I'm out for a hike, having a cup of coffee? That's probably what we're gonna call it. A hike and a coffee and whatever. Uh, today, it's all about what you want. Now, I had some ideas, and I just put these out here because these are things I want to do for myself anyway. I love to cook out here. That's actually a lot of work to prepare a meal to come out and cook, but I enjoy doing it. It's a great sense of satisfaction. You get to enjoy a lovely meal, and if I can bring you along to share with that, maybe encourage you to get out and do the same, then cooking is a win-win for all of us, right? Uh, what else? I still like doing my DIY projects, but I don't have the same need to do it. All of the kit where my DIY projects were originally intended to fit in, you know, like the niche that I had to fit something, whether it's a wood stove or whatever, has been <laughs> filled up time and time again. So a lot of that I don't. Now, there are still things that I can do, like working with wool blankets. There are still projects that I could be taking on, and uh, a lot of them are done at home and then worn out here or, or brought out here for testing and sharing. Uh, so DIY projects, um, how about, I don't know, I'll let you, you know, what types of things? I had th thought about themes like bushcraft skills, absolutely, right? I think bushcraft skills, it's time I got back to that. My bow drills, my plant identification, my uh, primitive fire making, uh, foraging and plant identification, that's, that's something near and dear to me. I think that's, that's at the core of real bushcraft is being able to identify plants, know what they are. And it's not just edible or medicinal plants. It's all the trees out here. 
What are the trees that I see? What does that mean to me? What can I know works or lives and grows in association with those trees? What value do those trees have as a resource? Not that I go around chopping a lot of trees down, but you know, from where I'm sitting right now, I see some big, beautiful oaks, a lot of spruce trees, a lot of maple, yellow birch, which is not something I get a lot of out in the wilderness area. It's nice to see yellow birch in here. And what does that mean to see yellow birch? Well, normally it means it's an older forest uh, and there are some big trees to support that as well. So uh, yeah, uh, well, how about those? After that, you tell me, what would you like to see me do while I'm out here other than enjoy myself, which is I'm gonna do anyway, because that's the whole point, right? Uh, I'll leave it at that. But before I go, I gotta have another drink of my coffee. What I'll try and do is, maybe not every time, <coughs> excuse me, not every time, but as often as I can, is make coffee a different way. You know, I have lots of ways of making coffee. Some of them were devices that I uh, received for testing and review, and I'll probably end up bringing them back out, because if I, if I bring them back out, it's because I still like using them. How does that go? How does, what does that say? But I'm, it won't be a review if I bring them back out. It'll just be using them, period. And if you're interested in talking about them, if you're interested in hearing me talk about coffee, I can talk about coffee. I can talk about that at length. Or anything else. Okay. Once again, I open it up to you. Whatever you would like me to do, I can't promise I'll do everything, but I'll seriously give consideration to it. And, uh, and if I can do it while I'm out here, winter, summer, fall, whenever, then that's what we'll do. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. That's what I did today. I ended up in this beautiful spot. It'll be worth it. Bye for now.